Welcome to this tutorial about equivalence testing with SPSS for group differences. With an equivalence test, we don't test whether two groups are exactly equal when it comes to a dependent variable, because unfortunately that's not possible, but we test whether those groups are equivalent. That is, the group difference is smaller than some pre-specified boundary. So for our effect size, we set a lower bound and an upper bound, and we test whether our effect size lies within those boundaries. There are two ways to run an equivalence test. The first one is running two one-sided tests. One test that our effect is smaller than the upper bound, and the second that our effect is higher than the lower bound. And if both one-sided tests are significant, we would conclude that our effect lies within those boundaries and therefore is equivalent to zero. And there's a second approach that leads to the same conclusions, that is constructing a 90% confidence interval for our effect. And if this confidence interval lies completely within our equivalence boundaries, then we can conclude equivalence. So we have our lower bound and our upper bound. And here our confidence interval lies completely within those boundaries. Therefore, our effect is equivalent to zero, based on our decision about the boundaries. If we want to do an equivalence test in SPSS, we start with choosing our boundaries. And we do that by deciding what's the smallest effect size of interest. That depends on your research question. In this paper by Lakens, Scheel and Isacher, the authors present several different approaches to decide what's your smallest effect size of interest. You'll find a link to this paper in the description of this video. For our example, let's assume we've decided that our boundaries are minus 0.5 and plus 0.5 for Cohen's D. Next, we run an independent samples t-test. In this example, we want to test whether the variable contact is more or less the same for both genders. When we have the results, the first thing we want to check is here the Lewin's test, because we will be using an effect size calculator in order to construct a confidence interval, because it's not so easy to do that directly in SPSS. And this effect size calculator gives us confidence intervals based on the assumption that we have equal variances. So if this would be significant, then we couldn't use this approach. In that case, I would recommend using Jamovi. That's an open source software package which can run equivalence tests. And there you can run an equivalence test even if e the variances are not equal. You'll find a link to a tutorial about that in the description. And then we need this table group statistics. Because for our effect size calculator, we need the sample size, the mean, and the standard deviation for both groups. Next, we construct the 90% confidence interval. And I'm doing this with an effect size calculator from Psychometrica. You'll find the link in the description. And there the option 2, comparisons of groups with different sample size. In order to get a confidence interval, you have to input 7 data points, the mean for both groups, the standard deviation for both groups, the sample size for both groups, and of course down here 90% as our confidence level. So we take these six numbers, put them in this effect size calculator, choose 90% for our confidence coefficient, and here we get the confidence interval from minus 0.301 to 0.346. And the only thing that remains to be done is comparing our boundaries with this confidence interval. Our boundaries were minus 0.5 to plus 0.5, and we see that our confidence interval lies completely within those boundaries. Therefore, we have shown equivalence. That is, based on those equivalence boundaries, the group difference is equivalent to zero. Not equal to zero, but equivalent to zero. Now you know how you can run an equivalence test for group differences with SPSS and an effect size calculator. You'll find my other statistic tutorials on my website.